Hello and welcome to World of Tanks with Thrapsikis. Now, we're watching Trace of Steel from my clan playing in the Type 5 Heavy. And in this 357 matchup that the matchmaker seems to favor these days, if you're in a top tier heavy, you're in charge. The enemy team has an E100 in, the, in a similar position, but with the recent buffs to the Type 5 Heavy, you can reliably do damage to any tank's front whereas the E100 doesn't have that luxury. So what buffs am I talking about? The gun is a derp gun with an average damage of 1100 and a penetration of 75 but the premium shells do exactly the same with more damage. So the same blast radius, the same penetration just the average damage bounces up to 1400. So you can do a lot of damage with those and Tracer has decided to load those as his, as his default rounds. So you'll see he's running 15 of those in 10 standard rounds. Right. The other buffs that the Type 5 Heavy has had is that the frontal armor has been increased to the point where it's very difficult to find any spot on the front of a Type 5 Heavy that doesn't have 300 millimeters of effective armor. So. What, now in this position, what one would hope to happen is that the two tier 9 heavies would fall back a little bit and allow him to take the front. This means we keep more guns, guns in the game and the type 5 can stop the enemies from advancing. So, as you see there, first shot on the E100, over 600 damage done. He didn't need to penetrate. And now... He takes a hit from a friendly. The right way to handle this is exactly what Tracer is doing here. If a friendly hits you, it's obviously an accident. He didn't mean to hit you, he's not trying to screw up your game. But you're moving up and down right in front of him. So just ignore it. Or there he gets another shot from a friendly. And this one at least apologizes. Tracer no problem. So he could turn around and shoot back or ram the guy or annoy the guy. That's not the way to win the game. Simply. And it's it's not going to be fun for you either. You're going to get angry. Don't do it. Okay? Alright, so. He's taken shots from five, four, five enemies in front of him. He's been tracked a couple of times. He's taken a critical damage to his gun so far hasn't lost any hit points. So that's where the Type 5 Heavy really excels. You can sit there, you can soak up all the shots without taking damage, so his combat effectiveness is still at 100%. He's still the, big, the biggest threat on his team. Now the E100 does this clever thing here. He pushes in so that he can shoot the damaged targets behind Tracer. And Tracer does another th clever thing here. Instead of trying to shoot the front of the E100, he rather shoots the lower tier tanks with less armor. So he does more damage to them and as a, increases his chances of taking guns out of the game. They obviously damage to the 257. Cracking him stops him from flanking. But the 257 behind him is doing quite a lot of damage. So Tracer is in a bit of trouble here. He's facing five tanks. And he's alone. And he's probably one shot. But now he's providing his team with a very valuable asset. And that is time. You'll see that two of his heavies have already gone past towards the north. And they're coming back. Now, if Tracer is dead by the time they get here, then they'll basically be lemmings. But if he stays alive, which he's doing, then the enemies are going to be in trouble. So, by surviving, by angling his tank consistent, continuously and by not giving up, he's provided his team enough time to actually come back and handle the threat. So, where he was 1 versus 5 with, I believe, the 121B also shooting at him from the middle, he kept angling his tank all the time and he got a very good result there for himself and for the team. 
he provided enough time for the team to actually turn the situation around and now being in the lead by several tanks. I'm just going to speed up because watching the top five heavy drivers like watching paint dry. And Tracer does a, an interesting thing here. He doesn't want to chase after the enemies. He wants to sit here. And, but he, he tells his team that's what he's going to do. He's going to sit here, pre-aimed, and hope to get a shot at the T28 prototype. Now, the 252U here is doing something not that clever. He rushes up alone to the front of a reloaded TD. Obviously, you're going to need a shot. So, in that kind of situation, rather wait for your team and simultaneously attack to improve your chances of doing something against the guy that's waiting there for you. All right, let's have a look at the post-game stats. His first barrel stripe, surprisingly, only a second-class mastery. So, I think you really need to do a lot of damage with this thing to be able to master it. Spotter for his assistance damages, and then high caliber steel wall cool-headed and spartan if you look at the team details you'll see over a thousand base experience so second class mastery with over a thousand that means you're probably gonna have to do about 1500 to 1600 base experience to to ace this beast you see the damage there of just over 5000 and on the personal details uh, hang on before we get there you'll see that's the most damage that anyone in the game managed to do but not by a huge margin. The 121B that was sitting in the middle was just under 5,000 damage. So it's not that he did an obscene amount of damage. It's just that the amount of damage he blocked and the amount of time that he provided to his team provided them with an opportunity to defeat the enemies. In personal details, you'll see 11 shots fired, 10 hits and 10 penetrations. I don't believe that's quite accurate because a lot of the shells did less than average damage so not low rolls they didn't penetrate but let's uh, let that one slide with damage blocked at exactly 7500 and because he was running premium ammunition as standard even with a premium account he made a loss but it's not that big a loss about 18,000 crits very well then tracer thank you for sending me this replay and thank you for watching